Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, once again to the hit show, a story written by a current prisoner, which your favorite journalist told me is doing his thing, giving you an inside scoop, inside the minds of California's criminals, California's incarcerated. We have on the line Mr. Conejo, sir. Happy holidays, brother. How you doing? I'm doing great. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Sorry about that. I'm doing great. Looking forward to these holiday season because this is 2023. And in 23, I got a great opportunity to go to board and actually get out. So I'm looking forward to this year. Maybe God might bless me this year, Tony. Oh, man. Ho- hopefully he does, man. Hopefully he does, man. You got to see this outside world, man, because it is beautiful out here, Cornell, bro. Let me tell you, man, it is beautiful out here, man. Hey, but Mr. Cornell, sir, man, let's just see you do get blessed and you do get to see the outside streets. What do you see yourself doing out here? Actually, I see myself pursuing this career that I get, that this opportunity that you gave me on explaining and sharing my stories with people because when I get out, that's my goal to try and help these youngsters to be on the right path so they won't waste all these years in prison. So I'm going to pursue that out there. And maybe you never know. I might I might be able to do something with my stories, write a book, or maybe do a a, a hit series in like a YouTube or or or, or FX or, or one of those uh, little series of, of documentaries in the future. I got a couple uh, a couple uh, people that are interested in, in 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 three of my stories that I did in the past. So I might pursue that. But my main objective is to help kids to go to juveniles and talk to kids. Oh, absolutely, man. Absolutely, man. Hopefully you do get that opportunity, bro. And man, hopefully when you do make it further, man, you give me a shout out. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah. But um but yeah, man, so we're gonna go ahead and dive right into it, bro. Man, the floor is yours, man. Happy holidays, ladies and gentlemen. For everybody out there, man, doing thing, man. Love your family, man. Be happy. You know, treat yourself, you know, buy yourself a little something, buy yourself a little snack, a little a little present for the holidays, man. You only live one time. This life is very short, man. Live it to the fullest. So with that being said, Mr. Cornell, sir, go ahead and do your thing. Okay, I'm talking to you. So, But before I start, I would like to tell all you people to enjoy the holidays for they are not just given. They're not granted. It's an opportunity to enjoy life with your family and your loved ones. And never forget the main reason about Christmas is the birth of Jesus Christ. Now I'm going to get to my story. And my story is going to take you back to 1985, Norco, CRC, when I was there at the end number before I got excluded and went to Chino and met Joe Morgan in, in, in Cypress Hall next to Palm Hall. Well, the reason I'm telling this story is because this, this, this time of year was the time when this riot happened in CRC. It was the day of the Super Bowl. The day of the Super Bowl, and we were all getting ready in the hotel. In CRC, they got a building where, I don't know know if it's true or not, but they say that that hotel was the reason why they made, the Eagles made Hotel California. Because one of the Eagles was in CRC, I guess, doing time, and he made a song of the hotel called it Hotel California. I don't know if you people heard that song before. It's a famous song. Well, anyways... I was in CRC at the end number, youngster, and uh, I'm not going to lie. It, it was a drug program that was supposed to uh, uh, keep us away from drugs, and, 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 and I, I, was a, I was a little angry, and it was supposed to keep us away from drugs. But actually, when I went from the county jail to there, as an as a end number, it's called a dual commitment. It's a civil commitment, an uh, addictive commitment. And when I went there, I'm thinking I'm going to go to drug, uh, a drug program, but actually, it was worse than the streets. I'm telling you, there was dope everywhere. It's dorms. Just imagine this. It's dorms, and there's a hundred people for each dorm. And everybody in that prison are addicts. Whites, Mexicans, blacks, whites, Indians, all addicts, all in numbers. Well, when I got there, there was over... 3,000 people there, inmates. So imagine that. You have the hotel, which holds like maybe 400 people. And then you got the lowers, it's the middle. And then you got the the the, uh, uh, the the high, the uppers, which is section 
section three, and and then you got the yard. That prison is so big that the hallway alone, they say, was a mile long. When you walk the hallway and you keep from the hotel, I'm talking about that's how long it was in a curve, like a mile, they say, because of all the dorms, and there was dorms all the way down, 23, 24, 26, 27. This is how crazy that prison was. They have windows, but there's no window. It's just open. That I used to jump out the window when they used to put me, it's called house arrest. And you're just in the dorms, sitting there like you get a write-up, and you're supposed to be laying on your bunk and not just stay in the building. Why well, used to jump out the window, and the and 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 the buildings, the the the, the dorms are, are are like kind of high off the ground. And I used to go under the dorm and walk through the bottom of the dorms and go all the way with my homeboys. Like I was in I was in in, in 22, dorm 22, and I used to go all the way over to the dorm like 41. Go through the bottom and go all the way and pop up and go inside with my homies there and go kick it with them all day. And they'll be calling my name, Cornell, wait a minute, Cornell, report back to the building. And the SMEs, back in those days, they would drive these these these, these cars, but they don't have no window, they're like a roll bar, like it was like a like almost like a sandbook, you know, like the roll bar in the back, but there's cars. And they would chase you, basically chase me down the hallways in the yard trying to get me and arrest me. And they had these holding cells that they'd put you there because they didn't have no hole there. Because it was it was a, it's supposed to be a civil addictive program. Whenever you need to go to the hole, they were taking a chino. Well, in 1985, we're we're getting ready to look at the Super Bowl, and we're all drinking, right? It's us and the homies. Back then, you got to remember, back then, the homies you like you hang there all people from your area, like my area back then. They went by they went by 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 the phone. You know your area code of your phone. And back then, six one nine was San Diego Imperial Valley. Indio Coachella, and we all used to kick it together. So we're in, we're in dorm 23, drinking, and we go over there to the to the to the motel, uh, 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 dorm six, and the homies are right there. With, uh, and he said, "You're gonna, gonna go back to you look at the game in the dorm. We want to kick back right here." I said, "No, I'm gonna kick back right here because I had like back then in the yard. I swear to God, and I'm not I'm not exaggerating because where I live at, there's a lot of there's a there's a there's a, there's, a, there's it's unfortunate that." There's a lot of homies that were addicted to that in Coachella, Indio, and all that. Well, back then I had like maybe a hundred some homeboys from my area that were there. So when I go to the building, I mean the dorm six, the homies that were there, there was like maybe I see like like seventeen of us there, and they already had like back then everybody used to make wine, right? So they had like like maybe like five gallons in 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 in, 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 in ten gallon in ten gallon uh, 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 buckets. And we were already drinking, so I said, I'm going to kick it right here. So my homeboy Ernie boy and Sammy said, well, I got to go to the dorm for I'm going to get a visit today. And I'm like, well, go ahead, for I'm going to kick it. Well, I'm drinking right there. And the homie Yonke is right there from San Diego. Well, the homie Yonke, he's been drinking. He's kind of he's kind of messed up, bro. So back then, you used to throw your ID on the on the chair and where you're sitting at, and that's like letting the people know when you get up to go use the restroom or something, that's like letting the next person know, hey, this is my chair. So you would throw your ID on it. Well, this day, everybody's looking for chairs because it's the Super Bowl, bro, and the TV rooms are in their own room. The dorms in the back, the rooms are the TV rooms in the front. So when we get back in there, we're drinking in the back because we have the wine in the back where the dorms are at, where our bed area is at. So we're drinking, and we come back. When we come back, you don't get IDs in the ground. There's like, there's like six Morenos in there, six black dudes in there, and, and you don't get tell, hey, homies, that's my chair. And he goes... I didn't see no ID on it when I came in, but Yonke's ID is on the ground. He's picking it up. He goes, yeah, because you threw it off the chair. And the homie said, no, nah, I didn't throw shit off the chair. So as he's doing this, he gets up. He stands up. And this dude was kind of big. We got to remember back then they had weights. And most of us, you know what I mean, we're kind of small youngsters. And back then I think Yonke was like 21. I was 18. These dudes were already kind of big, too. These dudes are like 30-something already. They're kind of yoked up, bro, bro. I'm talking about swole. They've been there like two, three years already in CRC. So, Yonke sees that when he gets up, and he's like, oh, so you're not going to give me the chair back? He goes, nah, there was, this, there was no idea, and I'm telling you. So, Yonke just says, all right, so I'm thinking, no, nah, we can't let it go like this. So, Yonke gets out the TV room, and we follow him, a couple homies from my area, from Imperial Valley, and we tell him, what's up? And he goes, come on, let's go to my area. Let's go to my area. So he goes to his battery, he picks up, he goes, pick up the bed. And the bed, you know, the bed is, it's, it's two beds, it's, you can move them around. So we pick up the bed, and the bottom of the bed, he takes up the top off the bottom, 
that's holding the side of the bed. He pulls it out, and a big old he had a big old fierro like an ice pick, big one. So he pulls it out. He said, "What's up?" He goes, "I'm gonna go hit this fool." So we're like, "All right." I mean, if that's what you want to do, dog. He's like, "Yeah," because I'm not gonna fight him. That dude's gonna beat me up. He's too big, and he was. So as soon as we went in the, we already planned out. Look, we're gonna go in. If he doesn't give up the chair, this is what we talk about. He said, "If we go in there and he doesn't give up the chair, then Young I'm just gonna take off on him." You guys want to back me up or what? We said, no, we got your back, fool. So we already knew, so we grab a couple other fierros, and we go in there. So as soon as Joe could tell him, look, Holmes, he knows his name. I think his name was, 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 was Stretch. He tell him, hey, Stretch, check it out, man. That's my chair. You threw the ID on. Give me, off, you can give me the chair back or what? And he gets up. He says, man, I ain't giving shit. So he goes, oh, yeah? So he turns around. He goes, why, what's up? And he gets like he's going to do something. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Joe could tell him. Nah, hey, 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 stretch. Hey, ain't no, ain't no need for that, man. It's all good, man. It's all right. So he's like, all right, that's what I thought. So, so when he sits down, Yonke pulls off the strap and Yonke just takes off and starts hitting him. Boom, boom. Well, he grabs Yonke's hand. Yonke hit him like two times. One went right in his neck and it's right in like an ice pick, and the other one hit him like in the side. But he's so big, he grabs Yonke's hand. He grabs him and throws him towards the wall. Boom! And Yonke went flying. So at that time, I take off the. I take out, excuse my name, I take out the strap and we start hitting the other black dudes and it turned into a big old riot, right? But it was just like a six on, I say like ten of us. So we, we threw down, boom, okay, when, when, when the seals and all that hurt, they go in and they start, they come, start coming in, we all scatter around. You gotta remember, it's like a hundred some people, a hundred some enemies. So we scatter around. By that time, I'm already down in the bottom when they said, get down, get down. I'm already down in the bottom in the, in the first floor going out the building, but I got a strap on me, and they're coming running in, the S&Es and all, the COs, they're coming running in, it's like maybe 15 of them coming running in, and back then, they, they used to be kind of deep, because you got to remember, like 3,000 inmates in that prison back then, well, as I'm, as they said, get out, I get down, I'm by the wall, get by the wall, get out of the way, so they're coming in, I got the strap on me, and the dude that, you have 60 seconds remaining, from San Bernardino, and I tell him, hey, fool, hide this for me, he's like, Oh, you were involved with that? I said, yeah. So he grabs it real quick, and I get up and take out wife. You, where are you going? And the dude hit me, hit the wall, and he patted me down. So he pats me down. I don't got nothing. So you sit down. So they cuff me up, and I sat down. Homeboy's got the strap over there. Okay, Conejo, sir, you can go ahead and proceed, my friend. Okay, like I was telling you. So I'm already when the when the when the stump jump when the riot jumped off, it, they're they're running towards building by, uh, the the sixth floor. By the time they, the S and E's and the and the officers were coming, I worked my way all the way down to the bottom floor because I knew I had to get out the building before I get caught up in this. Because I mean, like four dudes got hit pretty bad. So I'm running. I get down by the wall. They said, "Get against the wall." So he said, "Get in the wall. Get it. You have to always get in the corner of the wall when they're coming running in to get out their way." So. I'm in the corner, and I see homeboy Tito for San Bernardino, and I know him. I say, Tito, he goes, do me a favor, full stash And I show him, I show him the fierro, you know, the blade, you know, the, 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 the ice pick. And he sees it, he goes, oh, you were involved in the bell? I said, yeah. So he grabs it, and I get up, and I take off, try and get more farther out. I'm trying to actually get out of the building, because once I'm in the building, I can show that hey, I wasn't involved in this. I was out the building. But as soon as I'm, I'm going out, one of the seals, get on the wall, get down. So I get down, he cuffs me up, and he puts me on the wall, and I say, man. Now, now for sure I'm thinking I'm hit. You know what I mean? They're gonna, so they take off. Okay, they go up there. I could see they're taking the dudes out on the, on the ambulance. They're taking the dudes out that got hit, medical and all that. So I'm right there in the office. Oh, what, what's up with this? That's one of the. Uh, well, it was actually a lieutenant. He said, "What's up with this guy, Cornejo?" Because he already knew me because I already had some runs with him. That's that's Lieutenant Smith. And he goes, "I don't know. He was trying to get off the building." And he goes, "Cornejo, what were you doing?" I'm just trying to go back out of the building because you're going to write me up for being out of bounds. I'm not trying to get no 150. I'm going to go see status. So he goes, all right, I'm cuff him. He goes, were you involved in this? I said, I never even made it up there. I was down here. So he said, I'm cuff him. And he let me get out the building. So I don't know if he was actually looking out for me or doing me a favor. Well, anyways, I end up taking off. They take a couple of dudes. They got they, they, they got a couple of dudes cuffed up that, that were involved. But Jokey and, 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 and uh, Sammy Boy from 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 – East, East side, San Diego, all of them got away. They just took some dude that they thought, because when the stabbing happened in the day room, blood got on them, and they're the ones that they took, but they weren't really involved. Well, anyways, 
they, 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 they take them. And I go all the way to my, my dorm, building 22. All the homies are already right there in the back of the dorm. Because you can, the back, back in the, the back door, that's the yard right there. You walk out the back door and you're in the yard already, in the lowers, in the lowers in between, right there by the visiting room and all that. Well, you're in the lowers and, and, and they used to have these barber shops where you sit down, they got like a righteous barber shop. You sit down like a, like a chair and they, they used to have like a real, like a real barber shop, like the street. It was, it was pretty bad, bro. Well, you used to sit in there and they would cut your hair and everything. So I made it all the way inside to the barber shop when, when the CEO said, what are you doing, Cornell? I said, you're supposed to be in the dorm. You're not even supposed to be out. And I'm like, man, I came to cut my hair. Homeboys could have cut my hair right here. So I was get back in the building, man. So I go in there. And when I go in there in the back of the building, all the homies from the 619 were already back. They were already together, the ones in the lowers. And at that time, I could count easy, like 45 of us. So we're together. I'm running down to them. What happened? This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. The whole hotel, like in segregation, like, you know what I mean? Like, like, they're not letting nobody come and nobody get out. At this time in the yard, we can see, like, there's like over 60 black dudes that are uh, uh, getting together in the yard, and they're talking. So we're like, man, this, this thing's going to escalate. So we're like, start getting the straps. So we, we used to have these these areas in the, in, 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 the, in, the, in the in the in the garden. They had like a little garden, like you know, little, you know, little plants. Well, we're digging up the we're digging up the, the weapons out, and we used to have stockpile like ten at a time in each in each time, each barrel you had. So they're taking ten at a time, and I'm telling I'm telling them, give it to the homies, give it to the homies. Back then. All the homies used to listen to me because they, you know, I was the most craziest one, the most influential. At that time, I wasn't nobody, but I don't know why, but they used to all listen to me, bro. Even the older dudes, my homeboy, the oldest one that was there was my homeboy, Tico. And Tico used to tell me, look, Frankie, you're a youngster, you're crazy, but they all listened to you because all these dudes grew up with you from your area, and they listened to you, so guide them in the right direction all the time. Don't guide them in the wrong direction because... It's going to go against you in the long run. So he used to school me. And actually, he used to listen to me. He grew up with my dad. So I used to always take, take his words for heart, to heart. So, yeah, I did. So I'm telling the homies, get the fiddle, start set. Everybody gets strapped up. He goes, why? I said, things going to jump, fool. These dudes are going to try and hit us when we're not looking. And, yeah, that's what they did. So while we're there in the yard, we're actually in the yard, we see them. They take off on the dudes from, from Riverside, the black dudes. So it turns into like a like a like a twenty on twenty. Well, that's when we take off and we start starting boom, 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 and they they didn't think we were strapped. Well, like thirty of us were strapped, and we start stabbing them. The, the black dudes were actually just fighting. They weren't stabbing nobody, or maybe they were cutting you with a razor. Well, that riot escalated to like a I'm not yeah, I'm not exaggerating. It, it escalated like into a thirty on thirty, forty on forty, like. 50 on 50 in different sections of different, the yard, in the lowers, the, the middle, the hotel, where it got so big that dudes were getting stabbed. Because you got to remember the tower, they don't have no towers there back then. So it was so big that the Department of Corrections had to call the National Guards in the prison to stop us. I mean, the riot, this thing, I, I'm not exaggerating. This riot went on from 9 or 10 o'clock in the morning, all the way to like, I said like, like maybe like 1 o'clock before the actual National Guards came in there where they had to drive to the prison and come in. And when they came in, man, they were suited and booted. They had these big ass long sticks, like, you know, the big old billy clip, the, 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 you know, the black bats that they used to use back in the days? Well, these were actually big old extended brown, brown sticks like that, but not black, brown. And when they came in, they were just swinging and boom, boom, hitting dudes like bang, 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 knocking dudes out. I'm talking about, man, I got hit in the head and it busted my whole head open. I still got this big old scar on top of my head when he hit me. But one of the homies, I'm talking about, they were just knocking dudes out, boom, boom, hitting you in the legs, everything. I'm talking about, they weren't, when they came in, they weren't playing. They weren't like, get off the way, nothing. They were just straight knocking you, boom, boom, hitting you dudes in the head, in the legs, in the body, everything, get them out the way. And they came in, they were coming in in aisles of, uh, of 20 each one, like a line of, of, a five, 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 and five coming in like that, like like Marines, like soldiers coming in and spreading out, taking over, and that's the way they calmed it down because they knew, and they were shooting you with the with the with the with the with the, with the little blocks. It's called bazookas. We call them bazookas, where it's like four blocks go boom, 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 and it throws out two blocks out, and they were hitting you at close range, just boom, boom, and that should, that would take your win out, bro. Well, 
after a while, like in, within an hour, they got it under control. And at, at, at the same time that these dudes are hitting you with the bats and, and shooting you with the guns, there was like another five zipping you with the, with the, with the plastic zips in your hand. Like they would zip your hand behind your back and just shh, and tie your hand. I'm talking about you couldn't even get out of it. We're just, you know, lock it. And, and the zip tie would lock into your hand. Some were getting hog tied. The dudes were, if they want to stop, they will hog tie your legs and your hands together. You'd be pinned down on the ground where you just, your legs are in the air and your back behind you. And, hey, bro, it was crazy, bro. This is the biggest riot I've ever been in my life where the National Guards got called in. I'm talking about a lot of people got hurt, but most of the people that got hurt, bro, it's the, it's the National Guards, the one who actually hurt them. Yeah, there was dudes that got stabbed, that we, that people stabbed, but they weren't really in, 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 in they were in, 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 some of them were in critical condition, but the way these guys came in, I've never seen that in my life. At the times, you know, back in the days when people were protesting in the, in the universities back in the 1960s, like Kansas City and all of them, when they were protesting against the race, race riots and all that? Well, that's what reminded me of this, because they came in doing the same thing like that. They didn't care who they killed or who they got hurt. They just needed to control the prison and zip tie everybody. I'm talking about, and the people that weren't involved, I swear to God, I tripped up because mostly you see the Christians and the Muslims and all, like in the walls trying to get out the way, and they were actually scared too. Some of them got caught up because they're like, no, 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 we're not involved. And they didn't care. There was a boom, 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 hitting dudes in the head and the body, everything, and they just, a lot of them just threw themselves in the ground with their hands all open so they wouldn't even get hit. And that was showing, like, the National Guards, hey, we don't got nothing to do with this. They didn't care because they didn't... This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. You got to remember, when you get an agency coming in that doesn't have no kind of affiliation, no, I mean, no kind of uh, uh, understanding who they're, who they're actually arresting or who they're zip-tying, they didn't know who's Christian, who's Catholic, uh, Catholic who's religious... They didn't know who's a, a, a model inmate or nothing. They just, they just, it's not everybody as, 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 as mess ups because it was a riot. And back then, yo, my, my camarada, Freddy, Freddy, Freddy Gonzalez was there. Got not, not Freddy from, from, from Pomona. He was there. He was doing a violation, an eight month violation. I was like, man, that's before he picked up, he picked up his murder because he ended up killing a, 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 a NF member. And, and that's before he picked up the murder and got made in the county jail over the Riverside. But, man, this riot was so crazy. Back then, Calacas was there. Calacas, Calacas, Calacas was there. Uh, 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 I don't know if you know, uh, 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 Louis was there. Uh, 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 fuck, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Chato from Laverne was there. I could name you a lot of carnales that later on in the future got made into the M. But that was the first riot that we were in that, you know, when you go back and you, you do things in, in, in the past and you start, like back in the days when we were in the, in the Bay, we talked about that that time and the homies said, you remember that riot, Cornel? And I'm like, yeah, that was a crazy riot. And he's like, bro, I've never been no riot like that. And the homies, other homies, other carnitas are like, well, yeah, what happened? We're in the tier. You remember, in the, in the Bay, it's only four cells on top and four on the bottom, so we're talking about the riot, what happened. And they're like, no, I didn't have it. I said, yeah, bro. We're lucky they didn't come in shooting dudes. They had, they actually had the nine, but they weren't, they actually didn't use it, like to shoot somebody, cause nobody, after they got hit, they got down. But they had authority to open fire on us if we got, if we got crazy, but it's just that nobody got that crazy like that. Once you got hit with them sticks in your head or your body, believe me, that hurt, you're gonna go down. I got hit in my head to this day, I got a big ass gash on top of my head where the, when the dude came at me, he said, get down, I didn't get down, I'm like, and I, he just, Man, hit me. I thought he was, I, he, he dazed me, almost knocked me out. I didn't even know what was going on. Well, back then, before I go any further in my story, I got to let you know, this is going to be 2023. I got a good opportunity in making it out to parole when I go to board. Remember, help me out. Any of you people hearing me out there that, my stories have helped you change your son's life or your daughter's life. My stories have brought them back to their, their to reality and made them do right, get back on the right path. I want you to help me. Whatever you can donate to my cash app so I can give me an attorney. Because if I get an attorney, I got a good chance in going home. Remember, my cash app is easy. It's just a dollar sign 
and it's Free Conejo, F-R-E-E-C-O-N-E-J-O. That's all it is. And you can donate five dollars, ten dollars, whatever you can donate, because all that, all, the, all, all, all over the time that I've been talking to you, I'm putting that money together to hire an attorney, and I got a good opportunity, a very good opportunity, in making it out in 2023. Please help me. I tell these stories to help you out, to try and help you get back on the right path. Because I got so many kids that tell me, "Hey, Cornell." Your story touched my life, bro. I changed my ways and came back to reality. Now I'm walking the path of God. And those those are the reasons why I do this. This is the reason why I tell my stories. Yeah, there's sometimes the story has to sound raw and, and, and real and legit because I can't sugarcoat it. Because I lived a crazy life. I'm being honest. I lived a crazy life and I got to tell it like it is. And that's why people like my stories is because... I try not to sugarcoat it, but at the same time, I'm not glorifying it. I'm not glorifying what I did. I feel ashamed for what I did. But it's the reality. It's already happened. I did it. But I'm using that. You have 60 seconds remaining. People change your ways to better yourself. So one day you can tell me, Cornel, you actually helped me change my life. So please. When you listen to my stories, don't don't listen to the glorifying sections of my story. Listen to this part of the story that helps you change your life to a better person because all we are, we got a soul, and, and, and we can change that, and we can go better, and the best thing is walk the path of God because that way you don't have to waste all these years in prison like me because I did. I felt a lot of times lonely crying in my cell, alone, of sadness and loneliness. And I could feel the cold of the sickness in my blood as I got cancer. So please, let my stories change you. Tony, it's going to hang up.